we're going to automate getting all of our tasks from all of our groups and all of our planner plans in one report that we can filter on project or group name today. So for example, if I wanted to see all of my upcoming tasks that were due, I can filter on group if I want to. I can select the plans that I want and I can filter on the next month or week or whatever to get all of my tasks that are upcoming. And this is just a starting point. So once you have all of this data in one place, you can do all kinds of crazy cool stuff with it. Like you can make a dashboard, you could show the percentage of completed tasks by project, you could highlight everything that's overdue all in one place. But today we're just going to get this data in here to get us started. And let me show you how this works. So here's the flow we made in the last video. We're going to use this to extend it to get all of our planner tasks from all of our plans in all of our groups. If you haven't seen the prior video yet, please check that out first because this video is assuming that you already have a flow up and ready to go to extend. So the first thing we're going to do is disable the uh, new design experience. So I'm just going to toggle it off. Um, sorry, Microsoft, but it won't let me do all of the things we need to do in this video. So we're just going to start with it off. So if you recall from last time, what this flow is doing is getting the tasks for a particular plan, getting the buckets, and then for each of those things, it is pulling the task details and putting them in a variable. And we're sending that variable to a file and connecting to it with Power BI. All we need to do is add a step here right before list tasks and get the groups. So groups, if you search for the word groups, there's a whole category of stuff in here. Um, the ones at the bottom are the, going to be the ones you want to pay attention to. The groups that I own and belong to and my owned groups. The one you want to be careful with is this list groups because that one's going to get all groups in your organization. And if you're not an owner or a member of those groups, it's not going to let you get the plan details for them. I'm going to use this one down here, the V2. And you actually don't need to configure anything for this. Um, what you do want to check is go to the ellipses menu and see which connection it's running under. Because for some reason, this connector for me always defaults to my test account, not my actual account. So I don't know if it's like alphabetical or something, but um, I need to change it to get my groups because that's the context is running under. So we've got our groups. Now we need to get our plans. So we want to add a loop here. This is under control, apply to each. So we want to apply to each of those groups. And I'm going to rename this to for each group. And what we want to iterate on here is going to be the value from that list my own group step. Those are the rows of the return. So for each group, let's add another action. We want to list plans for a group. That's this one here. And that wants a group ID. So we just go into this drop down menu. It's going to try and get us to pick a specific one. What we want to do is enter a custom value down here. And we want to give it the group ID from the list my own groups. So now for each of those plans, we want to do these things down here. So we need one more for each loop. Control, apply to each, rename this to for each plan so that you know what it's about. And for this, we want to give it the value for the list plans for a group. So that's going to do for each plan, do these things. Now we need to get the actions from down here up here. And the thing with this is you can't just drag and drop these in here. So it'll give you an error about it depending on something outside of the for each loop. And you can't select multiple of these and just move them all at once um, because you just can't select multiple. But there's a really cool trick you can do to get around this, which is to use a scope. So down here underneath the loop, I am going to add an action and search for scope. This isn't really what scopes are supposed to be for, but um, it works. <laughs> so, so I was just going to drag these in here. You kind of got to go in order. So we're going to go like this. And we're going to stop at this one here. So these two need to stay outside the scope because they're not going to go in the loop. So now we can drag this scope inside our other loop. So we're going to click and drag into the for each plan. 
right there. And we need to do a few more things here. So we need to update some references. So this list tasks, since we're using the flow from last time as getting the tasks for a specific group, we need to change that to be for the dynamic content that we're acting on in our loops. So we're just going to click on this drop down and then go to enter custom value and put in our group ID right there. And then it's going to automatically change this thing down here to some text garbage. We need to change that to do the same thing, enter custom value and put in the value ID here, the ID of the plan. And then do the same thing for this list buckets. And you can actually copy and paste these things. So like if I copy this, it'll let me paste it in here, but you do need to select this enter custom value. You can't just paste it in the box. All right, so next we need to add some stuff to our array variable. So down here, we appended all of our data together. We need to add some stuff to this because we wanna know which project and which group this task data is associated with, right? So we're just gonna go, I'm just gonna put it in on the second line here. You can put it wherever you want in this list, but I'm gonna do group ID and then we're gonna feed it the group ID here and same thing for the group name, the plan ID and the plan name. The thing I've noticed with this particular action is every time you insert something, it pushes your cursor to the top of the field list. So um, watch out for that. You'll end up inserting the commas outside the brackets up here and that'll break your data set. So um, make sure it doesn't do that to you. The plan name is this value title here. So next we have the colored flag. So this value pink and cranberry, there's a whole slew of colors. I only pulled two in here for the demo. Consider what you wanna do with these because the text values will vary for these depending on the plan. So people can call these text flags whatever they want. But Power Automate only knows if the color is true or false. So if you call these something here as its status, so my pink flag was pending. It could be that pink was totally different in a different plan. So what I would do with this is only pull in the flags that are really important and then try and be consistent with what you call them in your plans. So maybe use red and always call red blocked or something like that. I wouldn't try and pull in every single color flag for every single plan here unless you're going to just use the color names. So you could just call this pink and this one cranberry and call it a day. Um, but then I'm not sure how useful that would be for reporting at that point. You see where I'm going with this? So <laughs> the flags are uh, kind of hit or miss. The other thing I want to call out is priority. So somebody asked a question on the last video on how to get priority information about the tasks. And it's not in one of the dynamic content cards. So if you search for priority in here, you won't find it. But it is in the return for list tasks. So you can get it. You just need to reference it with an expression. So all you do is add an expression. And for your expression, you put in, what did I call it here? So I'm going to try and zoom in on this in the video. But um, it's the items and then some parentheses. And then you put in the name of your for each loop, which... Um, is the one up here for each task. You may have called it something else. You replace the spaces with underscores and that'll just insert the priority value. The priority, by the way, is a number in the data return. So you have to map that back to some text value on the Power BI side. So you can add a conditional column and just for each of the numbers that gets returned, remap it to a specific text value. So that's priority. I'm going to go through another couple of things for troubleshooting purposes. So if we come back up here to the list plans for a group step, what I found when I was testing this is this will sometimes fail. The conditions for which it will fail are if you are not a member of the group that you own. So group members and group owners are two very different things. 
It really wants you to be a member for some reason of these groups. So if you have this fail with a 403 forbidden error, just go and add yourself as a member of those groups, even if you're already an owner, and that should clear it up. Um, the other time it'll fail is if the group is semi-recently deleted. For some reason, it still thinks that it exists and tries to get the plan data for the group and fails. So if we need to error handle this kind of thing, um, if adding yourself as a member doesn't work and you don't actually need the plans for that group anyways, which would be the case for a deleted group, what you can do is just add a parallel branch here, and then we're just going to add a compose step. And the compose step, I'm just going to feed it the group name that failed. And we're going to set the run after for this under the ellipses menu to run after list plans for a group is, has failed, is skipped, or has timed out. And that basically just gives it a happy path to go through. And that'll keep your flow running. Um, you also need to go to the first step at the bottom of the loop here. So this one right outside the loop and set the run after for that to run for all cases. And you do this because if anything fails inside this loop, it'll flag the loop as having failed. And so it'll stop your flow. You want it to keep going if it can't get the plans for something, right? Um, and while we're on that topic, there's a set of actions in our flow from the other day that I forgot to do this for in the other video. So that was the for each assignee. So when your assignee doesn't exist and it tries to get the user profile for it, it'll fail. We added a parallel branch there to um, handle what happens if it doesn't have a profile, but we forgot to set this step here to have the run after failure for the loop. So just check the boxes for those if you used this kind of configuration last time. All right, so we should have everything we need now. Let's test this. All right, so it has completed. You'll notice that it did have a couple of issues on the for each loop. So that was the groups. This list plans for a group, like I mentioned earlier. If I open up one of these, I got a forbidden error. And that was for a group that I'm not a member of, but I am an owner of. And so again, the fix for that is to just add yourself as a member of the group. And the other one that failed is this group, which I deleted right before making this video. So it kept looping, which is what we wanted. And just to show you what it looks like if there are no plans for a group, so it just outputs blank and then it skips the step where it gets the details, which is what we want. So this has sent the file to our SharePoint site, which we are already connected to in Power BI. So I'm just gonna open up Power BI. If you haven't seen the video where we set up the Power BI data model, uh, you might want to check that out first. I will link that in a card and in the video description. So here's our Power BI file from last time. Um, this is one that's connected to the data for a single project. We're going to update this to pull in all of our project information. So I'm going to go to transform data in the ribbon. And we are going to go to our tasks table. And we're going to go to the expanded column one steps, the third one down and click the gear menu next to it. And that's gonna give us the option to pull in those new fields that we added. So that was a group ID, group name, plan ID, and plan name. And then also the priority field here and click okay. And then we need to go down to the remove other columns step. That was the one that was removing the extra things that we didn't need and we need to make sure that we do the same thing there. So select the columns that we wanted to keep. So the group and the plan name and the priority, click okay on that. And now we have this priority field and priority is a number. The text label for it doesn't come through in Power Automate. So what we need to do is reassign these things back um, to the original text label. So urgent, important, etc. We're going to go in and map those. It turns out they're one, three, five, and nine. So I'm going to add a column here in the toolbar and I'm going to choose conditional column and we can insert it. That's fine. I'm going to call this priority label. And we're going to say if priority equals one, then urgent and so on and so forth.
And for the else, I'm just going to put in null there. If at any point in this process you don't see some of the fields you expect to see, just go and refresh your query. So go to the home tab and do the refresh preview. Sometimes it caches your old data and so it um, some things might not show up unless you refresh. So our assignees and our subtasks should be fine. We shouldn't need to do anything with those. The flags, that'll depend what you did with these. So if you recall, I renamed my flags to the color labels in Power Automate. So they're like cranberry and something else now, pink. Um, when you rename those in Power Automate, Power BI is still referencing the old values. And so I'm going to show you how to update that in case you ever need to do it. But if you didn't, you can skip this step. And if you're not using the flags at all, then totally skip this. But so kind of similar to tasks, we're going to go to expand column one and go and uncheck anything that we're not using for the flags and then check the things that we are using for me that's these two colors and click OK. And this next step is going to give me an error because it's referencing things that don't exist anymore. So honestly we don't really need this change type step because these are all text fields anyway. Um, so I'm just going to delete it. And then remove other columns is also referencing things that don't exist anymore. So I just need to go in and use the gear menu to select the things I want it to use, which is those two colors again. And then we did an unpivot other. And that one we don't need to do anything with. And we should be good to go. So I'm going to click close and apply now. So if we add our priority field to our table and we sort by that, it's going to sort alphabetically by default because that's how Power BI functions. If we wanted to sort by something else, like the actual priority numeric value, we just need to set the sort on that priority label field. So if I select it over here on the right and then go to sort by column up here in the toolbar and tell it to sort by priority, which was the numeric value, and then it'll sort properly. So since we've pulled in every single one of our plans here, it's very likely that you don't want every single one to show up in a given report. So if you have some older ones or some plans where you were just messing around with things, you probably want to filter those out. So all you need to do for that is just drag your plan name and maybe your group name if you want to filter on that over to this filters on all pages and just deselect the ones you don't want. So I'm going to select all and then deselect say demo project. And for these, if you click on this hide filter, this little eye icon, it'll hide that from the viewers. So they won't know that those are being filtered out. So the priority label we could use conditional formatting icons on. So if you want to do that, just select your table and then go to the carrot next to it, conditional formatting icons. So something that would work well for this, I think, is this one here. I'm just going to flag the urgent ones. So we just say if the value is urgent, then use the red X. And then we want to do our slicers. So I'm just going to scrunch this down a little bit. And I'm going to kind of speed through the slicers because they're not all that interesting. But essentially what I like to do for these is configure one the way I like it and then just copy and paste them. So I don't have to fiddle with all of the formatting every single time. So we're just going to do the group name and the plan name. So format your visual slicer settings to drop down if you want. And the selection, I always turn this multi-select with control off because nobody knows to use control when they're selecting multiple. And then the header, I'm going to change the font because din bothers me. Semi-bold, let's make that 10. All right, and let's change the name too. All right, I'm going to copy and paste this, and we're going to drop in the plan name. And same thing. So for this one, we're going to do the relative date filter, right? So that was the task due date. Rename that. And it's in the format your visual in the same place as before. So for style, we can change it to relative date. Make it a little wider. And if you set this to next, it'll stay that way for your viewers. So there we go. If we want to do some cool dashboarding stuff with this, we could. I don't have anything pre-planned for that. But if I come up with something awesome, I will share it. Um, make sure to schedule a refresh on your data set for this so that it auto updates. And thank you for watching.